Hello and welcome to Easy Maths. This is the second lesson in which we're going to look at the, the concept of accuracy and errors on a series of lessons on approximation and errors. And so let's go straight to it. Accuracy and errors. Um, let's begin by saying the following things. The first one is that there's always an error in all measurements. Since all measurements are normally given to or subject to some given degree of accuracy. And therefore under these I want us to look at some three concepts. The first one is the idea of absolute error. Now consider the following. A table whose height is 98.2 centimeters. If you're considering a table whose height is given as 98.2 centimeters, it means that length there was done correct to the nearest 0 0.1 centimeter. And therefore, that is the degree of accuracy that the person was targeting. We should also say that the actual length could be smaller or even bigger than this. Now, it could lie between 98.15 centimeters or 98.25 centimeters. And if you look at these two numbers keenly, the 98.15 rounded off to one decimal place will be 98.2. Any number between below 98.25 rounded off to one decimal place will also be the same. So it, this number could have been anywhere between these two digits. Now, the 98.15 is what we would call the lower limit and the other one is the upper limit. So those are the limits within which the measurement of the height of the table is obviously lying. Now, the 98.2 minus this 0 0.1 divided by 2 should give us a lower limit. And if we get the 98.2 plus 0 0.1 all over 2 would give us the upper limit. And therefore, the 0 0.12 divided by 2 is actually 0 0.05. And therefore, this is what we are adding to 98.2 to get the upper limit, subtracting from, from 98.2 to get the lower limit. Now, this is the point. That is what we call the absolute error. In other words, the error that is possibly been introduced by giving the height of the table is 98.2. That's what we call the absolute error that has been introduced there. It is maximally 0 0.05. Since this number could have been 0. Point, sorry, 98.25, See that way we have added 0 0.05 or it could be below this one by 0 0.05 that is 98.15 which is the lower limit there so that's how we define the absolute error now we told find the limits within which the following measurements lie just to pull this a lot uh, maybe to to put to make this clearer we're given three measurements 26 centimeters 26.0 26.07 now, we're going to consider the lower limit, the upper limit, and the absolute error, just to, as we try to cement this concept. Now, the lower limit of this should be 25.5, because this must be measured correct to the nearest whole number, because there's no decimal. And so it is, the lower limit could be 25.5, the upper limit could be 26.5, and that's because the absolute error is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the same as 1 divided by 2. We're adding that to 26 or subtracting you get the upper and lower limits respectively. The next one, 26.0. It means this number, this person is targeting to write this number correct the nearest one decimal place. So this, it could have been as low as 25.95 or even 26.05 because the absolute error is 0 0.05. That is what we are adding to this or subtracting to get the upper and lower limits respectively. Again, 26.07, that number could have been 26.065 or could have been, could have been anywhere between 26.065 or 26.075 because the absolute error is 0 0.005. If we add this number to this, we get the upper limit. If we subtract to this, we get the lower limit. And so this hopefully brings us to speed with what really is absolute error is the error that could have been introduced by giving a certain measurement as 26 or 26.05 sorry 26.0 or 26.07 now the other concept that we should look at 
in this section is relative error which is normally given by the absolute error divided by actual value that is given the error that's been introduced is by giving the figure as 98.2 divided by the actual value that has been given which is 98.2 now if we consider part b here this 26.0 the relative error will be 0 0.05 this one divided by the actual value which is 26.0 which is 0 0.001923 hope that makes sense moving on to percentage error it is normally given as the relative error times 100 you know relative error is absolute error of, a, of a actual value that means this percentage error can be given as this figure times 100 this particular way if you consider b above here we're going to say the that uh, the percentage error will be 0 0.001923 times 100 which is just which is going to be 0 0.1923 percent and i hope that that explains a lot about um, the whole idea of the accuracy and the error and even its percentage form that has been introduced by giving a certain measurement let's move on to some two examples we draw the temperature of a body is measured and recorded is 29.5 degrees Celsius. Find the absolute relative percentage error. Let's continue as follows. First thing, the measurement here by given 29.5 is normally is actually given to the nearest one decimal place. That means the absolute error will be 0 0.1, that is 0 0.1 decimal place, divided by 2, which gives us 0 0.05. That's absolute error. This is the error that could have been introduced by giving the measurement of this particular body as 29.5. Since it could have been higher than this figure by 0 0.05 or lower from this figure by the same 0 0.05. Now, relative error, part the second part here, is normally the actual absolute error divided by actual value, which in our case is 0 0.05 divided by 29.5. The answer is 0 0.001695. And I think that's also clear. The percentage error is a relative error times 100, which is, in our case, 0 0.001695 times 100, which is 0.1695%. So the percentage error that has been reduced by giving the measurement of that particular body is 29.5 is 0.1695. And it makes sense, I believe. The last example. We told what's the percentage error in using 0 0.67 or 0 0.66 as an estimate of two-thirds. Let's consider the first part, 0 .0, 0 0.67. We'll need to get an absolute error for that. And so absolute error is actually, we get the number that has been given. This measure, 2 over 3, has been given as 0 0.67. So what error has been introduced? We're not going to operate as we've done in this case or even in previous examples. See, we are given this 0 0.67. And the estimate, as an estimate of 2 thirds, we just subtract 2 to get the whatever our error there is, which is 1 over 300. Now, percentage error will be absolute error divided by actual error value times 100, which in our case is 1 over 300 divided by 2 over 3 times 100. It is going to be 0 0.05. So, by giving the measurement of two thirds as 0 0.67, we have introduced an error of 0.5%. Part B, 0.66. The absolute error in this case will be 2 over 3 minus 0 minus 6, 6 of 100. Again, please understand that 6, 6 of 100 is 0 0.66. The same way we would have said uh, 6, 7 of 100 is, 0, is the same as 0 0.67. So the absolute error in this case will be 1 over 150. And this looks like half of 1 over 300. No, this is 2 times 1 over 300. So what's the percentage error? It'll be obviously absolute error of actual value times 100, which is... Uh, if you operate, you're going to get 1%. And that brings me to the end of the second lesson about um, that aspect of calculating the absolute, relative, and percentage errors. We'll move on to the next part in our next video. So you can always like, subscribe, share. I'll appreciate Thank you.